uh, and probably like one of 20 ideas, one is good. <laughs> so like the Teflon force technique is really something that really changed my approach for, for matrix sync. And to be honest, I just switched almost completely like from the t- traditional plastic or wooden letters into the Teflon one. Class two restorations are not easy. Let's face it. Matrix selection and matrix adaptation It's only easy if you don't use magnification. I mean, the first time I started using magnification, that's when I started to notice all these gaps and imperfect cervical seals of my matrix bands. And then we start getting into wedge modification, wedge selection, wedge enhancement with PTFE, rubber dam inversion. These little fiddly details will drive you nuts. But you know what? All these challenges are part of the beauty of daily bread and butter dentistry. Patrus Rati, we've got an absolute treat today. We're really going to give so many gems thanks to Mashek Zerwinski. I mean, you're going to absolutely love this episode because for me, class two restorations, I, I love doing them, okay? Because they're not easy and it t- it's taken me years to master and I'm still learning and I'm still improving uh, day by day. Thanks to awesome dentists like Mashek Zerwinski, who are so selfless in sharing these tips, like every little daily challenge that you can think of, Mashik has a hack for it. So you're going to love this. We're going to tackle all sorts like how to ensure that you don't get any sort of gaps under your matrix. The most common question that he gets and the reason I, I got him on is to choose which is the best matrix. At dental school, I was only taught the Sigvaland as a champion and the second best one was Toffelmeyer. That's what I was taught. There was no hint of any sectional systems. I only learned them when I got out of dental school as a practicing dentist and you know what? They were a steep learning curve. Getting the whole ring properly positioned, the matrix correctly positioned without deforming, I mean, all these things were stressful. Uh, And of course, when you're getting the right isolation as well, I mean, class two restorations are a steep learning curve and you really can feel really proud when you get a lovely contact with a nice curve, with the correct seal, but it's not easy to get there. But after this episode, I'm hoping it's gonna be a little bit, just that little bit easier. The protrusive dental pearl I have for you for this episode is very much relevant to to class two restorations. Sometimes if you're using a sectional band system, you place a sectional uh, matrix band in and you got your cervical seal, great. You got your ring on, good but not perfect. So um, along the proximal walls, buccal and palatal for example, there might be these uh, gaps. Now it's not the end of the world because when you place your composite, you're gonna get some flash buccally, you're gonna get some flash palatally and you can just disc it away. But if you just spend a little bit of time getting that seal perfected buccally and palatally, then it just means an easier and quicker and less messy uh, process at the end. You don't have to tidy up as much. So how can you improve your seal if the ring isn't 100% doing its job? Well, what you can do is use balls of PTFE tape, of course, what else? Uh, And then you feed that in so that when you then put your ring on, it's going to create that added compression onto the matrix band to hopefully improve your seal. And this can be used also for, for the cervical seal, so the, the, the gingival area. If you find that the matrix band is not fully adapted to the, the cavity, even though you've got the right wedge in there, sometimes all you need to do is wrap the wedge in PTFE. And obviously, uh, part of this episode, one cool thing that you might learn is the Teflon wedge technique. Now, I do urge you to perhaps watch this episode as well as listening. If you're usually a listener to the podcast, I'm always, I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. But for this one, I think you can, he does share a few cases and they are amazing, right? You should definitely catch this on protrusive.co.uk or on Facebook or on Tubules, wherever you usually consume the, the the video version. So do check that out and I hope you find that pearl useful. But to be honest with you, the whole episode is just a massive protrusive dental pearl. So Mashek, thank you so much for absolutely a really amazing episode, which we're going to go into right now. Mashek, welcome to the Protrusive Dental Podcast. How are you, my friend? Hello, Jess. It's really nice to, to meet you. Uh, and it's a great pleasure for me that you invited me. So yeah, it's, it's a really great honor for me. No, honestly, it's great because you are someone who uh, I have seen and learned so much from your social media presence. The detail that you go into with the restorations that you post with the dentistry. And what I love about your dentistry, uh, Mashek, is it's not all like fancy. Uh, I mean, you got, you do fancy stuff as well. Don't get me wrong, okay? But it's not all fancy uh, class fours with 27 sure. different layers and stuff and texturing. You do the daily 
dentistry and you document it so well because ultimately what this podcast episode is about is one of the most difficult things in dentistry, which is to do well, is actually the humble class two or the, the isolation, the matricing and that sort of stuff. So right. the reason I, I got you on is because every now and then on the Facebook groups, people are, dentists are asking the question. The question they're asking is, which is the best matrix? Okay. And since about a year and a half, every time someone asks that question on Facebook, I am there straight away and I post your photo, the MSS, the matrix selection system cool. and, and that photo has educated so many dentists because now they understand a bit more so before we dive into the first question which is which is the best matrix and i know how you're going to answer it uh, just tell us a little bit about <laughs> where you're from okay uh, uh okay, a little bit about sure. yourself Ma Ma mashek by the way we had a chat earlier and if you're an island you will call uh, mashek magic and i quite like the name magic but uh, to, to, to me i'm trying to say uh, in a polish way uh, mashek so mashek please over to you uh, yes, I'm from Poland, uh, from beautiful city that is Toruń. This is the city of Nicholas Copernicus. So I still work with my dad in a little single office, dental office, where in one, one office we've got two dental chairs. Uh, and I started my dental story probably something around like 11 or maybe 12 years ago right now. So time flies really, really quickly. Your, so it's your father and yourself, you both run the practice together? Yes. And to be honest, at the beginning, I thought that this is a very good advantage of possessing my father nearby because, you know, whenever I had an, any problem with the difficult extraction, with some prosthetic planning, and I had some doubts, it's always much better to have more experienced doctor uh, nearby you. However, after some time, I realized that it's not so cool situation for me because I took everything from my dad. So I had only my dad, not like many, many other dentists, like in big dental offices. And I took also his style of work that at the beginning was really cool. But later on, it was a huge problem for me to switch to do something in a different way than, than my, my father. And yeah, that was probably... Uh, the biggest shift in my career when I decided that I have to change something because it wasn't enough for me. That's very interesting. And I've seen um, your YouTube videos and I believe when you were teaching like with the Teflon floss technique and we'll come on to that later, all the nitty gritty. But I remember, I think your <laughs> surgery had a, a microscope, right? Yes. So how long have you been using the scope for? Is this something that your dad inspired you to use a microscope or is this your you sort of discovering your own style of dentistry? The funny situation is that it's, it wasn't my dad who pushed me into the microscope. I'm trying to push my dad to try the microscope, but it's not so easy because, you know, when you are experienced, it's probably much more difficult to change your style of work. So right now I work with microscope probably for uh, more than five, maybe six years. And at the beginning, it was probably the most expensive uh, light in my dental office because I, <laughs> I didn't use it at all. So I bought it and it was waiting for only difficult cases because I thought that this is only about the microscopic thing. But later on, it turned out that when I tried it and I was trying the microscope more and more, almost in every single case, after two weeks, I couldn't just work without the microscope. So the funny story was the fact that at the beginning, I couldn't afford the microscope, and I, but I really wanted to, to work on it. So my story was that I was, I was purchasing the, the microscope from different company to try it. So they give me the microscope for like one week, two weeks, and I was just taking like 10 microscopes from different companies <laughs> just to have the, the microscope in my office. But after half a year of trying different scopes, I decided, okay, that, that's the moment that I have to buy it. And probably in which that case, was which one, one did you buy? So, so, so you, you tried all these different companies. I'm just, I'm just curious, yeah. which, one, which one did you go for? Uh, you know, I was trying the Leica, I was trying Thais, I was trying Cups, and the, the Cups was, was my final choice. And uh, when we talk about the ergonomic, about the optics, it's a really, really good microscope. Fantastic. But today, um, I'm just setting the scene so we know a little bit about you, your level of work, you're working in the scope. But really, today is about um, this segment of the episode. Uh, every episode has a theme. And today is really about 
matrix selection. So tell me, when did you come up with the, the matrix selection system? How did you think to organize it? Why did you think this was an issue that dentists need to learn about? Because I see that you're very active in dental education, which is, which is amazing. And again, I learned so much from it. But tell us a little bit about which in your opinion, is the best matrix, and tell us about the matrix selection system. The funny story about the matrix selection system is the fact that I invented it uh, after the very good party. So I have no idea why, but suddenly there was like, the, you know, that's just something that, okay, let's think about the matrix. Uh, why? Because probably I had always a lot of problems with matrixing. So, you know, I, I developed the successor sequence it, and that was at the beginning the sequence just for for my work. I didn't realize that it can be helpful also for other people. But later on, it turned out that you can even make a courses from the restorative treatment, and people really like it. So I'm really happy about it. But uh, in fact, that was this, the the sequence just for me, just to improve my work. Because at some mo at, at some point in my career, I decided that. I will not gonna hide my problems and I will try to, to solve it. So whenever I had a problem, I just took the photo of the problem and after the work, I was thinking how I can change a little bit to, to, to be better next time. At the end, uh, I almost didn't have any problems, but the, the last part of the most problematic part was the matrixing. So I didn't have any problem with the isolation, with the safe preparation of carriers, uh, with anatomy or anything other. But the matrixing was always uh, the biggest one. I was say, what are the common problems that you get with matrix? Let's just go over it, like, you know, uh, open contacts. And that's uh, what are the main common challenges we face as dentists with, with doing good standard of class twos and, and just restorations in general? What are the main problems that you found in your journey that led you to go deeper and deeper and deeper to, to learn to improve to the standard that you're working at today? First of all, the, the biggest problem is was the fact that I bought the microscope. So before microscope, I didn't have a problem with matrix adaptation <laughs> because I didn't see it. But when I bought the microscope and suddenly I saw every single detail then it turned out that I really got a big problem with matrixing. So uh, at the beginning, the, the problem with matrix adaptation, so probably all of us would like to have the perfectly adapted matrix. And it is so frustrating when you see this little gap inside and you just try everything. You just take the bigger wedge, you push it with your knee, uh, your patient is screaming because there is some pain. And still, there is no any chance to adapt the matrix. And that was probably the biggest problem. Later on, the problem with wedge is that when I placed the wedge, uh, it totally damaged my isolation and there was a leakage from everywhere. Uh, another the, the, thing- The issue another... I get as well is uh, when you put the wedge in and then it actually displaces your matrix fully, yes. like you can come out, move around. These are all the issues. But the, but the funny thing, Mashek, is all these issues that we face, and I know you're gonna say a few more, but I just thought of something interesting. We are stuck inside this problem. Okay, let's talk call it a single tooth, yeah. right? You put the matrix aside and you're experimenting. You say to the nurse, can you get me a different size wedge? Can I want to try this matrix, okay? But the, the funny thing is the yeah. nurse is not seeing the problem and the nurse is probably thinking, just fill it, just fill it, right? Because every other dentist, yeah. he just fills it. Why are you asking for, so, so the nurse probably thinks that we're, sure. we're, we're really crap dentists because thinking, hey, hey, this other dentist, he spends half an hour, okay? The first matrix I give him always fits. And now you uh, will always spend uh, one hour and you will need seven different matrices, two, four different wedges, uh, a whole uh, tape of uh, Teflon for every case. So the nurse is thinking, oh, why is this dentist not very good? How bad you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, that, that's right. You know, the good thing about it is the fact that when we start work with rubber dam, we've got, finally, we've got time to to spend some time to play with the matrix. So definitely it was really cool for me at the beginning that I don't have to think about the cotton rolls. I don't have to think about the tongue or cheeks. I can finally work a little bit on the on the matrixing. So so that was okay. However, you know, I don't know how much time what, what was the biggest amount of time that you spend on choosing the matrix, but sometimes let's be honest, we can spend like half an hour trying different matrices or trying to adapt the matrix in different way. And probably that. if you spend like 30 minutes at the end, very often we are not very satisfied from the final result. So it's that true. was my really big problem. I, and I decided that 
let's try to to check what we can what we can do. And the good thing is about the uh, isolation, about working under the microscope. And probably the, the biggest shift in my career was the fact that I realized that I can make a mistake. That's that's the, the first thing. But I've got time to correct it. Because sometimes we just play the matrix. We say, okay, it's not very cool. Okay, maybe it will be better next time. But the thing is that even if we spend like 20 minutes, sometimes it's good to start from the very beginning and just try to find the, the perfect solution for that. Just not to hide the problem or at least to think about it at the end of the day. Uh, and this is cool when we take a photo and you can check maybe what wasn't okay. Can we uh, correct something? Can we do something in a different way? And when I was trying to find some solution about the wedging and uh, I was trying to develop this Teflon wedge, that was the, the very cool adventure for me at the beginning. Because you no, know, sometimes I think too much. I, I think, do you know the MacGyver? Do you, did you watch the MacGyver movie? I never watched it. Uh, it was this show that used to come on in the evenings, and uh, he was a detective, right? Not he was like more like the special agent. So he was doing almost everything. So if there was any problem, he could take just like the pencil and he could build the uh, the shuttle or the plane with the pencil. So that was the really cool guy. And I was watching MacGyver like for all my childhood. So maybe this is the reason that I was trying to find some solution also for dentistry. Uh, and probably like one of 20 ideas, one is good. <laughs> so like the Teflon floss technique is really something that really changed my approach for, for matrixing. And to be honest, I just switch almost completely like from the traditional plastic or wooden lettuce into the Teflon one. And well, it helps well, some me Some of my off. listeners are, are listening right now and they have no idea what the Teflon floss is, but we're, we're going to touch on that in a second. But I just sure. want that one two line answer that I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for, which is, which is the best matrix? Because this is what everyone wants to know. Everyone wants the money answer. They want to say, hey, which is the best matrix? Sure. So what is the matrix selection system? Which, by the way, I'll, if it, with your permission, I will post a photo on the Protrusive Dental sure. Community Facebook group and on the website so people can, can see what I mean about the different types of cavities and why it may need different matrices. So which is the best matrix? The answer will be not easy, as, as you probably know. Uh, there is no like the universal matrix. So depending on the case, we've got many different options to, to choose. And probably if you ask me like three, four months ago, I would tell you that the metal matrices are the best one. And because you are asking me this question today, I will tell you that today I am trying to use like more and more celluloid transparent matrices. And I see more and more advantages of, of, of doing it. But probably I will be more objective in one month. So probably there will be some one-to-one -one ratio between the metal and the celluloid. So they're just different and we can they're work different, in a different then, way. Absolutely, they work differently. But even then, what dentists, the, the, I think the trap dentists fall into is that they want to buy the one solution that will fit every situation. They want to buy, they want to spend the money once, they want to buy one matrix system that will do all the class twos, class threes, everything, okay? But I, and I'm sorry to break it to you all, but from what Mashek has taught me from his uh, MSS and what I learned from failing so many times myself is that there is no one magic matrix solution. Every cavity will be unique with its own curvatures, uh, own, in, even every cavity will need a different wedge, different matrix, different way of isolating. Uh, some, will remove, uh, some will need your gingiva removal, some will not. And, and, and all these aspects is something that I've learned fr from, from a lot from your posts, actually. Uh, so uh, one of the other, on that note of things that we learn from Mashek, your Teflon floss. Please describe to the listeners and people who are watching, what is the Teflon floss technique? And uh, is it so with Teflon wedge, floss or Teflon wedge? Or we can talk of both, obviously, because there's... Uh, Teflon you, floss, I love the, yeah, the, Teflon... <laughs> Teflon floss is like my trademark. So let's stay with Teflon, let's, let's, Teflon let's floss. Let's stay with Teflon floss. Okay, so wh what is a Teflon floss and when is the ideal okay. situation to use it? Uh, to be honest, like I told you before, I switch almost 100% uh, into the into the Teflon floss right now. Uh, so I'm using it like almost all the time, maybe not 100%, but probably 98% of the cases I will gonna use the Teflon floss. Uh, Teflon floss is something that we can call individual wedge. So when you ask me about what is the best matrix system, 
and I told you that there is no one, the universal one. So we could, you could ask the same question about the wedge. And the good thing about the wedges is that the Teflon force is something like more universal one, because it can adapt to every space that we've got. So at least I don't have to choose between the smaller, bigger, medium wedges or the plastic or wooden one. I will just take the one Teflon floors that will adapt to almost every space. So this is a really cool option for, for us. And the second very good option is the fact that it's not stiff because a lot of the problems connected with wedging was because we've, we work on the stiff wedges. So like the wooden one or the plastic one, and they will gonna move our rubber down. We will lose the isolation or it's difficult to press it inside the interdental space. But the uh, soft wedges, like the Teflon floss, uh, give you completely different options during the, the, the wedging. This is like the completely different vehicle for, for matrix adaptation and completely different scenario because I often regret that I, in the past, that I couldn't use like the two wedges from the both sides, from the palatal and the, and the lingual side, because sometimes we would like to just push it from the both sides. But with the, the plastic or wooden, it's impossible. With the Teflon flosses, we are using two separate Teflon flosses. We've got two wedges that we will pull from both sides, and we've got the matrix adaptation from both sides. And because we, the force is going from both sides, then we will not gonna move the, the rubber dam. So there are many, many advantages of, of the Teflon floss. And probably so, I could to, speak to summarize like for an hour the about that it, this. No, no, of, of course, but to make it, uh, really make it tangible. So you, I didn't appreciate that you were using it so often. I mean, I've seen your cases, but um, uh, it's good to learn this from you that actually you are actually depending on your Teflon floss 98% of the time rather than a wedge. Whereas I'm mostly still wedging, but occasionally from, from what I learned from you, I am using, using the Teflon floss uh, and I love the adaptation you get so it is instead of a wedge use a teflon floss now do you have a photo that you can share the screen and and, and show uh, an example of the teflon floss and of course i will also put your youtube link uh, that you kindly explain sure. uh, that the teflon floss which would be really great to everyone to see so in those situations you want a much nicer adaptation mm -hmm. than the teflon floss is the one so i've made you co-host so you should be able to share uh, an image if you have one okay can you see this right now so we've got right so now the comparison. I just want to describe for folks because a lot of people listening. You see, a lot of people listen, and I need we need to also uh, describe what's happening on the screen as well. So uh, you've got the the middle matrix, the yellow matrix. Uh, is the, what is the name given to that matrix? So it's the by the bioclear, right? Diamond wedge. So the, the yeah, okay. Wedge, sorry, so diamond wedge. On, of course. So on the picture, we've got the comparison of three different wedges. The first one is the the wooden wedge that is covered with Teflon, and I was using this for some time. Uh, the middle one is the the wedge from the BioClear company that I also from time to time use together with the BioClear matrix system. And the third picture is the Teflon floss, or maybe better even call it the part of the Teflon floss because you can see only the wedge here, but the whole idea about this wedge is the fact that it's connected to the floss. So the there is also that you can see on the on the picture this part, the, the thicker one, uh, is the the part where we scroll the Teflon on the on the dental floss and on the dental floss we have to place the notch. Then it's much easier to scroll the Teflon tape around it, and then we can produce something that in shape looks like like the wedge. But the whole idea is the fact that this wedge will adapt to the to the space. So if you want, just let me just tell me if i should if i should play the, the movie about how to use that or do you want me to play if, the movies if, or if not you, if you if you play it then what we can do is for those who are watching or be on instagram on, on youtube and stuff they can they can watch this uh for the audio i will remove it don't worry so yeah play it and then the people who are uh, more visual okay can, can, they'll be able to see it okay so on this picture you can see exactly the the full teflon floss as and as you can see uh, there is a there is a floss uh, and there is a knot on the floss, and around the knot, there is the scrolled Teflon tape. And on this movie, you can see exactly what, the, what idea is behind the Teflon floss. So when we pull it, it will fill the gap, and it will adapt the matrix perfectly. 
And because we've got two Teflon flosses in the same time, it will adapt the matrix from the both sides. So you pull on one side and you pull on the other side, uh, the two uh, Teflon flosses. Uh, sorry, Jess, I will just, okay. Can you repeat the question because there was a music in the movie? No problem. I can't hear the music by the way, so that's all fine. So um, you've got two Teflon flosses, one on either side. So you're pulling Buckley and you're also pulling from the palatal side, the two Teflon flosses. Exactly. But on this film, I was just recording it uh, only for purpose of the film to show how it's working. But the whole idea is uh, that you have to pull it in the same time. Yeah. So we shouldn't, on this film, I was pulling it from one side and later on from another one. But in those situations, I just want to ask while you're finding something is that sometimes, um, and it can, it can happen with wedges as well, you, you place your wedge or maybe you do the Teflon floss and although you get a very good cervical seal, you lose the contact. So what is your yeah. advice in, in those situations to uh, now that you've secured your cervical seal of the matrix, which is so important, how can you then, what do you need to do to get a uh, better contact? Is that a sign that you've chosen the incorrect matrix or can you improve it? So, you know, at the beginning, I thought that this is the biggest disadvantage of the Teloid matrix, that when I was pulling the two Teflon flosses, uh, the Teflon was going inside the matrix. And then we was losing the, the contact point and that was the problem. This is why I thought that it's much better to use the, the metal matrices with the Teflon floss technique because it's much more difficult to deform the, the metal matrix than the, the celluloid one. However, from probably a couple of months, I realized that it's not such a big disadvantage because if we've got the transparent matrix, we can take the uh, ball uh, a plier and we can burnish the matrix from the inside and that is another advantage of the Teflon floss technique. So with the transparent matrices you can just do what you want and even if you've got the, the Teflon inside the matrix you can just push it deeper from the outside using the flat plastic or you can use the, the ball burnisher and to burnish the matrix from the inside. So this option you've got only with the transparent matrices. With the metal one, if you, we, if you choose the, like, the very hard metal matrix, it's very difficult to have the Teflon inside the, inside the matrix. This is why this is probably my, the best possible mix for deep margin elevation cases when we connect the Tor saddle matrix that is a really hard matrix with the Teflon floss technique. And to be honest, the matrix adaptation of very deep cases with the saddle matrix and Teflon flosses is really, really easy. So this is like my best, best possible mix for the, for the deep margin elevation. But when we talk about the beautiful contact points by beautiful contacts and uh, the, the curvatures, the, the profile, then with the transparent matrices, we've got more options to, to, to do. That, that's awesome. I actually used the saddle matrix myself today. Uh, and uh, I, should have, I probably should have used Teflon floss technique, but uh, I, I, was, I was lazy. I just used a normal wedge. I managed to get a good result, but it would have been better if I used the Teflon floss. But in this situation that I use it today, sometimes the caries is so deep that you just want to get a nice seal. And then I will revisit uh, in the future for indirect restoration, uh, which is the long-term one. But I, I really admire how you, you know, execute to, to perfection so many times to get the seal and the nice contact. It just reminded me seeing that uh, video that you showed. At that point, do you tend to use a ring thereafter? Do you always use a ring? And which is the best ring? Because a lot of people say uh, the garrison sure. ring is the best. Some people say the paladin ring is the best. Some people say the one that comes uh, with the bioclear is okay. And even the Tor VM comes with the ring. Uh, any uh, advice on a, a ring that you prefer? Yeah, to be honest, there are many features of the rings. But the, the most important one is that the, the separation force. So we need the strong separation force if we want to use the thicker matrix. And we like to work on the thicker matrix because then it's much more easy to, to put it inside the, inside the cavity. So my personal choice uh, would be the, the Paladent ring, because I don't like when the ring invade the 
internal part of the matrix. So when we compare, for example, the Garrison, uh, they have this small tip that goes inside the matrix. And very often the result is the fact that it will deformate our matrix. So with the Paladin one, we'll just let the matrix go exactly like the matrix ones. So we've got more natural profile of the matrix. This is why I really like Paladin ring. Uh, what is more Paladin is pretty strong ring. However, I can tell you in in the secret that I'm working on my own uh, ring, uh, and oh, uh, the amazing. first. Can you can you, can you uh, call it the magic ring? Can you call it the you have to call it yeah, the magic it is, ring. It, <laughs> it, it it definitely is the magic ring. You, I, I will not tell you everything about it, but because I want to, to check it. But the thing is that I can make the as big separation as I as I want. So. The first tries are really promising, so I hope that in the near future I will, I will show it. And when it does come out, because because I you know I, I really admire everything you do, and the fact that you're now being inventive and being creative. When it does come out, please share it with me. I want to uh, share it to the world, so that, that's amazing. Sure. Uh, tell us about the magic ring. I'm very excited about the magic ring. Uh, right in the you interest know, of time, we need to on, answer. Yes, go on. Sorry, Masha, go for it. Sure. Only because I you know I was starting to inventing this new ring. That is the reason that right now I'm using the more transparent matrices because the biggest problem with the transparent matrices was the separation effect. That was too small and very often we finished without the contact point at all, like with the biofit from the bioclear. It's just too thick and the separation effect is not, not too big. But with this ring, there is no any problem. So that, that, that is the reason that I, I can use the transparent matrix more and more. Someone like you, myself, I'm doing lots of posterior dentistry. A lot of my patients are 50, 60 plus, the majority of my patients. And so I'm having these deep caries issues, uh, removing old amalgams. So I'm very excited for the magic ring. Uh, I've asked you a number of questions already. The next one I want to do to really get value for everyone listening is what is your number one tip if despite a tight wedge, let's say if you're using, uh, the, the, most people are using wedges, a lot of people listening, it's the first time they learned about the, the Teflon floss. Now, maybe they will start to use a Teflon floss, but what advice can you give to someone if tight wedging and using a ring, there is still a gap at the cervical seal of the matrix? What is it that needs to be done at that point? You know, when I discovered the solution for your question, I was so surprised because the Solution is so, so easy, but nobody told me that before. So I can show you the, the, the presentation because I think the, it's much better to describe it on the, on the photo. Let me play the presentation. Let me guess, is it like holding a probe there and just uh, actually keeping the probe there at the bottom? No, 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 it's even, it's even easier. Oh my God, okay. Uh, Okay, I, I, I won't say it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of something. You'll have to believe me if I tell. Yeah. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Teflon balls. I'm thinking balls of Teflons being fed buckle and lingual to to tighten the seal. <laughs> no, it's you know very often it's not about the wedge. So I thought that the the biggest problem with this little gap is because I don't have proper wedge. But when I got the perfect wedge like the Teflon balls, sometimes I still got this problem. Okay. So it turned out that this is not about the wedge, but this is more about, it's not even about the matrix, but it's even the matrix position. So if I can show the presentation, so let's sure, check sure. This, this case. So, so this is like the, the, our daily bread, our like very easy second class cavity on the, on the premolar. Uh, just and share your screen, uh, Mashek, you got to share your screen, ah, okay. buddy. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, right now. Okay. Right now? Bread and butter. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So this is our daily daily bread, the, the simple class to filling in the in the first premolar. So after the isolation, after the safe preparation, we've got pretty simple case to, to adapt. So after placing the proper matrix, after placing two Teflon flosses, after placing a ring, what we have to do is just to pull the two Teflon flosses. And as you can see, there is a little gap right here. That can be really frustrating. So why is it happening that, that there is a... Yes, so what is the problem? So the problem of this gap is not that there is not, not enough pressure from the Teflon floss, but this is the, because our 
matrix is very deep under the cavity margin. So this is the cavity margin. And when we, we really like to work with the very big matrices because we just will, it's much easier to push it with our finger. But then our matrix goes very deep under the cavity margin. Mm -hmm. So when we've got the margin right here, it's very difficult to press this matrix, especially when we use the thick one, the, the hard matrix, like the metal one. It's very difficult to press it like here. Yeah, we can see this gap even, even more on, on this picture. But look what happened when I removed the matrix and the ring. Look that the Teflon forces adapted the whole space in the perfect way. So this is not the 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 reason of the bad wedge, wedging or the matrix, but what we can do is just to take the same matrix and place it in just a little bit different position. So we can't go so deep with the matrix placement, and this is also the very cool advantage of the Teflon flaws technique, that you don't have to remove the wedge, but you can take the matrix out and you can place it one more time but right now in much better position. So right now we are with the, our matrix in this position. So we are much closer the gap and look that there is almost no gap at all. So this is that not is about so much the- much more simpler. That is so, you're right. You know, I never yeah. thought to do that. <laughs> Just move it, move it a little bit up move the matrix. Move it coronal, and that move, will it, move it a tiny bit yeah. more coronal. And there is no problem. So, you know, the, this is, the, the answer is so simple, but nobody told me for many, many years. And I was trying to, push more Teflon. I was trying to take more bigger wedges or making this strong push on this. And there was no any positive effect. But when we just move the matrix up, it's, it will solve a lot, a lot of problems. And then we can make the perfect contact point. And you can see that also in this situation, also what we can do is just to move a little bit the matrix and suddenly from the little gap, there is no gap at all. So it's so easy. But nobody's telling that. So that's no that's one's the, telling that. But also, I really, I really liked your diagram uh, that you had there. So again, this is something that I'm gonna have to put in the video portion of the podcast and not the audio. Uh, but for those listening on the audio, what basically Ma uh, Mashik is saying is sometimes when you have that gap, it's not because of the lack of seal. The seal is there. It's just matrix is a little bit too gingival, and you're getting that uh, over curvature. If you lift it up more coronally, for those listening then you can actually get rid of that uh, supposed gap. Uh, and with the Teflon uh, floss, as you showed, you don't even have to remove the, the wedge, which is your Teflon floss. So that is amazing. I think you've answered that really comprehensively with a, such a simple way. So that's awesome. Um, I saw your, okay, so we already asked you this question about, you've already answered it, metal versus celluloid. And sometimes you will change your mind and, and they're both great. And maybe you said maybe the metal one could be more favorable in the long term, but uh, they're both good. And you use the Viaclear, you use the, just name the different matrices that you use. What, what do you have in your practice daily? Yeah, sure. Uh, I will one more time share one one photo with you because I think that will also answer a lot. To be honest, I wanted even to to start this presentation with this photo because this is the cool thing about the dentistry that in the same patient, in the same case, we can choose different solution, and using just the different matrix, we can get like the totally different uh, final outcome. So as you can see, we've got the three different matrix in the same cavity. And with the metal one, with the metal matrix, it's sometimes very difficult, especially when the space is pretty wide between the cavity and the adjacent tooth. So it's very difficult to, to catch the contact point. But when we've got more curved matrix and we, we don't have very curved metal matrix, this is why we like the, the celluloid matrices like the biofit or like the biocular, we can get totally different outcomes. So we can get the beautiful contact point or even instead of the point, we can call it even the contact zone that it's also much better for in the long, in the long term. And I don't know if you had this situation, but sometimes we've got the patient with the diastema to close. And this is our, like the, this is our goal to, to close it. If we don't have the proper matrix, sometimes the visit will be a real nightmare because we're not going to finish that. So we will try to, to burnish the metal matrix. We will try to, to move it. But the final result will be really, really bad. This is why it's a very good 
solution to have like the at least couple of matrix from the different scenarios. So this is why why I started the the matrix selection system. So one of the, the the features of the matrix selection system is the fact that we've got different distances between the cavity and the adjacent tooth, and we can divide it into the thin, medium, and the wide situation. This is why it's good to have like at least a couple of matrices from the every group, and then it will be much, much easier to finish the uh, whole treatment on the single visit. Because without a good matrix, it's sometimes impossible. I, I totally agree, and this is why I like the matrix selection system so much. So for, for years, uh, you know, I was trying to find also, I, I was trying to use a palo dent for everything. But then I realized yeah. uh, from, from, you, from your teaching that actually, no, I, I can't. Sometimes I will have to use the BioClear because it has the extra curvature. Sometimes I, I, when I discovered Tor VM, I think it was from Tomorrow Tooth where I learned about Tor. Oh my gosh. Stiffer, I like the sort of uh, convexity it has, uh, several advantages in certain cavities compared to Paladin. So this was amazing. And your uh, success stairs matrix selection system really gave me some clarity on that. But one question I have on that, because you mentioned it, is that sometimes you have the patient with the, the posterior diastema where the space is just too big. And yes, maybe you can mm -hmm. use uh, the, the curviest bioclay matrix you have. But at, what, at which point do you say no? This is going to be indirect. What is your threshold to say, no, this will be indirect? That's a very good question. Uh, when we talk about the white situation, so when there is like the huge diastema, when we talk about the direct way and when we talk about the, for example, the bioclear curved matrix, when we've got the two teeth and the distance is pretty big, with the, the maximum amount of space that we can cover is probably something around three to four millimeters. So we can get the extra curvature of, of the matrix on everyone, like two millimeters. So when we summarize it, this is like the four, four millimeters. The funny thing is that it will be not much more easier for our dental technician to get the very wide space. So this is why, to be honest, right now, a lot of the works I will do in a direct way because I can be much more accurate than the in, in doing this in, in an indirect way. So I was taught that if you've got a problem, if the cavity is too deep or if you've got the problem with the matrix adaptation, then you should go to indirect way. But from my experience right now, the best possible option for me when we talk about the accuracy is the good matrix adaptation. And it's difficult to beat that. If you adapt the matrix in a proper way, your technician will have very big problem to be so accurate as you in a, doing that in a direct way. So right now I've got very few solutions, to be honest. So I've got direct feeling and the vertical crown that I'm a fan. So that's only because I've got the two, just two solutions for my patients. It's much better choice for me and for my patients. It's much easier to do. To, to, to make like, a decision if, because that was also my problem. If, if my directs were as good as yours, I probably wouldn't need a technician either. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, okay, th this, uh, we've covered a lot of ground here and we talked a, a lot about the nuances and nitty gritty and your visuals, the cases you showed were amazing. Uh, the question I want to ask at the end is, is a question that, again, a lot of people ask, right? And you probably had loads of people message you in the past about this is how do you restore the last molar? So let's say you've got the DO of the seven, they don't have a wisdom tooth. Mm -hmm. uh, what is, uh, in your hands, what is the nice technique to get the best cervical seal uh, in those scenarios? Yeah, when we talk about the distal cavity of the last tooth, this is almost everything is problematic because the problematic is the preparation because when we work with the rubber dam, there is the arm of the clamp. Uh, very often the whole isolation is also difficult. So it's difficult to place the clamp to, to catch the, uh, the, the cavity. Uh, then there is a problematic because of the uh, safe preparation. When we talk about the preparation with the um, micro etcher or with the uh, prophylactic powder. And also a matrix adaptation, of course, is, is a problem. So my trick uh, or maybe it's not even mine, but I can show show you some some solution for for that. Because quite so, often they are very subgingival because of the, the the distal gingiva is always uh, higher up. 
you know, the, the funny thing about the distal cavity is that always this will be a the member of your family or you, it will be your friend <laughs> or your wife or your mother-in-law. So the most <laughs> difficult case is always in, in the family. So the case that you can see, this is the, the, the friend from my high school. And he came to, to my office and Magic just helped me because I've got the cars. And when I saw that case and I, you know, you always want to show to your friend how good dentist you are. When I, when I look at this photo, I said, oh my goodness, this will be a, really a nightmare because this is like the biggest nightmare for, for all the dentists. So what we can do when we talk about the matrix adaptation. So I really like the technique that was presented by Steven Copania. This is the technique that we can call the matrix in matrix. And this is a really cool uh, technique when we can use the uh, the matrix system with the clamp, like the also like the torsadal matrix, and we can place another matrix inside, and we can pack mm. the Teflon in between the one matrix to and another one. So then we can adapt the matrix in a perfect way. This is the 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 one thing that we can do. There is also the the second option to 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 do that that we can call this single floss technique that we can also use the, the, the Teflon floss, but this time the single one. And then when we've got the, the Teflon on place, then we can just place the celluloid matrix. Of course, it's not very easy, but it's possible. So also with the celluloid matrix, it's, it's much easier because it's not so stiff, but also with the Teflon floss, because it's also not stiff, we can pack the, the matrix in between. So this is this is possible. So those are two techniques that I'm using to adapt the adapt the matrix on the distal side. And of course, it's not easy. Sometimes it looks very easy on the photo, but we have to remember that sometimes we have to spend like five to ten minutes to to finish that. That's uh, awesome. The only thing that um, I sometimes do for the last molar uh, that um, you hadn't shown the slides just yet, and maybe you use it, is the use of the Halaklama clamp. Is that something that you use? Uh, you mean the the gold one, right? The the, the yeah, very they, they come very in long colors, one. But yeah, the the very uh, different shape, sort of uh, the long one that you put in the premolar, and it moves your rubber dam yeah. and your uh, yeah buckle and palatal. Uh, I quite like that, and then that has helped me in the past in that situation. Uh, have you got an experience of that? I have never used. I saw that clamp, and to be honest, I wanted to even to buy it, but and probably I, I will because I, I really like the, the the new things. But you know, I always try to do it in in this way. I am not yeah. so sure if if there is no any clamp on the last tooth, how stable is the rubber dam? But you can you can tell me because it's I'm, it's case I'm dependent. So... You're right. If you've got en enough uh, clinical crown height the distally, then it's stable. But if if it's uh, you don't have enough clinical crown height, then it slips off. Uh, so that is a more challenge. And then what you have to do before it slips off, you have to quickly put your clamp on. Uh, and usually in that one, you have to use a circumferential matrix. You have to put your matrix on. So you have to put your uh, the, the circumferential matrix on to stop the rubber dam from coming up and quickly tighten it. So sure. it has its own challenges, but it gives you a bit more space. And you know what, um, uh, Mashik, I think you should get the Halle Climber clamp just for the patient who say who says no, I do not want rubber dam, and they deny it and they're claustrophobic. But you put this clamp inside. There is no such just... option in my office. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. You're 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 far too cruel. Yeah. But in those situations, this clamp, so I, I kid you not, it just moves the cheek and the tongue, the fat okay. tongue. You know that patient with a fat tongue uh, who will not tolerate the rubber dam for whatever reason. It just moves everything sure. out of the way. So it's it, it's great. So anyway, we covered a, a lot there, and that's amazing. Uh, Mashik, I know we're in a COVID world right now, so it might be difficult, but I know sometimes now and again, you've been to the UK, uh, and you go around the world. I, I think you're going to Denmark soon to do some teaching. Is that right? I hope so, but because of the COVID, you never know what will happen. But yes, the, the plan is for January to go to Aarhus. Uh, to to make there the the successors course this this will be probably the, the third edition of of this course in in Denmark. Amazing. So if those I hope so, people but listening from yeah, yeah fingers obviously. crossed. Uh, obviously, you know you'll keep up on yeah. For those people listening from Denmark, obviously uh, uh, check them out. But you've had you've come to the UK before, I believe with the with the Stephen Kerr. You've you've set some courses up before, right? Uh, yes, we organized the course Ian, with Ian, Ian Kerr. Ian Kerr. Yeah, Ian Kerr, sorry. with Ian. Uh, incredible, incredible dentist from from UK. I I, I really love this guy. Uh, so probably awesome. because we we talked with Ian, probably also make 
the the course also in the 2021 in UK. So maybe it will be a good option to 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 meet. Please, uh, I, I would love to, and please uh, do send me the links before that. Can I can just post it to everyone because you know everyone will see the level sure. of work that you're doing, and, and this is a daily problem that we have. So please do send me that stuff. So when the time comes in 2021, uh, we can give you a good welcome in the UK. But anyone, you know, people listen from all over the world. Where can they find out your course calendar and the content and your lovely content that you have on on Facebook and on YouTube? How can we see more of it? What are the channels we need to follow? Sure, there are like two options. So I've got the channel on the YouTube and that is called the Success Thirst. And the, there is the, the web page on the Facebook. Uh, so this is probably the best source to, if you want to, to see the cases that I'm presenting, this is the, the best possible options. So uh, I, will, I will send you the link that you can you can paste in this presentation. So I'll, I'll it put it in much, the show notes. So those listening, uh, protrusive.co.uk forward slash matrix dash system I'll, I'll name it that episode and then uh, in the show notes will be all of uh, Mashik's uh, links the link to his YouTube video and the Teflon floss it'll all be there so check it out uh, and Mashik when you're next in the UK do let me know I, I'd love to come and meet you in person but for now please 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 keep posting uh, these daily uh, <laughs> uh, challenging dilemmas because honestly we learn so much from them all the time so thank you so much for coming on as a guest I really appreciate our chat today thank you Des that was a Real pleasure for me also. So thanks a lot for the invitation. And I hope so that we'll also have the another meeting soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. Hey, if I was five years ago, just one or two years out of dental school, uh, and I heard Mashek and his pearls, that would have saved me so many uh, individual sort of moments of absolute grief and agony when I've been sort of fiddling around these matrix bands. So if you found this useful and you know a dentist who really who really struggles, I mean, we all do. We have these daily struggles of class two restorations, right? And if you think they'll benefit from this episode, please do share it with them. Send it on WhatsApp or, or email them. That'd be really appreciated. That's how the podcast grows. So thanks so much for listening all the way to the end. And finally, next episode will be anterior midpoint stop appliances part two. So AMSA part two to finish off on the splint temper, which was, uh, I mean, amazingly successful. Uh, and of course, with the splint course uh, launch coming up, so you can go to www.splintcourse.com to pre-register for that. But I'll tell you more about that in the next episode where I'm gonna hopefully make it, where I'm gonna make it a really impactful episode so you can get started with anterior midpoint stop appliances straight away. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Mm-hmm.